Okay, we're going to be talking about the ancient empire of Rome. All right, and uh, here with me today, I have Coach Whiting and Coach Purnell, and they're going to get us through the Roman Empire. All right, let's get started with the death of the Republic, Coach Whiting. Well, thank you, Mr. Mays. You know, we talked uh, earlier this week about the, uh, the rise of the Republic. And with the Punic Wars and Rome gaining power and gaining territory and gaining new lands, all this power kind of towards the, leans towards people wanting more and more power. And as that, that conquest and this power and the land all culminate. You said power three times. Exactly, because everybody loves power. You love power, Coach I Bruno? love power. You love power, Mr. Mays? I don't like power. You like power? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so what does this power lead to? This power leads to an empire. This power leads to an emperor, somebody wanting all of it. Okay. All and who right. is that one person? Um, 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 who is it? Julius Caesar! That's what I'm talking oh. about. All right, now before they get to Julius Caesar, um, now there were these emperors who, um, became dictators, these consuls who became dictators. And they're going to kind of set up this whole idea of the army becoming the center of power in the Senate. No, um, no, no, not the Senate. Oh, not the Senate. Not the Senate. Yeah, the, the army, Senate. The uh, army takes power over the Senate. Oh. Exactly. Say that one more time. Marius and Sulla say, well, the army, the army is doing all the fighting. The army is doing all the work while the Senate just sits there and talks about everything. So whoever is in control of the gun or the sword the sword at this time there's no guns yet no gunpowder right. so whoever's in control of the men with the swords is in control of rome and like the sword is like a representing you know, kind of like a, a phallic symbol if you think about it but that's a whole nother thing we won't go into that exactly <laughs> and enter julius caesar a talented politician and general all right now Over the next three years, Caesar drops his pose of protector. Not only does he conquer Gallic tribes to the north and west, but he also crosses the Rhine and the Channel to invade Germany and Britain, the first Roman to do so. In a combination of self-promotion and newscast, Caesar sends back the story of his conquest in action-packed dispatches. Those surrounded by thousands of natives only defended themselves with the utmost greatness over four Mr. hours. Peterson they killed Thomas a number Davis of Britons at the cost of only a few men wounded. As soon as our cavalry came in sight, the enemy threw down their arms and fled, suffering very heavy casualties. Caesar's account is one of the most remarkable political documents to survive from any age in the history of the world. It's intended to justify actions that many Romans regarded as completely illegal and outrageous and only justified by their success. So basically, if you pulled out his wallet, it would say BMF. <laughs> you got that right. Caesar was it. He was the guy. He was the one catalyst person that could bring everything together and lead and make Rome an empire. Uh, now, what is that T word down there? Triumvirate? Yeah, what, what, what is that? That was the combination of these three guys getting together to rule this empire. Um, there were Caesar, of course. There was Crassus. And there was also Pompey, I think. Those are the three, one, two, three. Yeah, yeah there you go. Uh, right the first triumvirate. Good job, right. Coach. Now, all right, so what happens after uh, a while after Caesar gets tired of this crap? Well, he says, screw you two guys. This is mine. I'm doing all the work. You're doing nothing. I have all the victories. You haven't done anything. It's mine. And so he's named Dictator. All right, and what does he do as Dictator? Absolutely everything. He just runs that into the ground. All right. And now, as dictator, the people are freaking joyous. They're happy. You know, Caesar's doing, he's giving them jobs. He's creating all kinds of stuff. He's building roads. Um, 
And then, you know, of course, he starts getting a big hit like Adolf Hitler. Yeah, but that's another story. For next semester. All right. So how do the senators take this? They don't like it. They don't like it at all. So they hatch a plot. They say, hey, hey, he's got to go, right? You're right. Am I right? Am I right? You're right. You're right. We've got to get rid of this dictator. So Caesar's <laughs> best friend in the Senate, who was he? Brutus, my man Brutus, yeah, Brutus. The Ides of March are come. I see Caesar, but not God. Brutus, ruthless Neil. like Tony Mantano, you know, before, you know, freaking uh, the Godfather. Man. I mean, that's, it's messed up. All right. Now, his son-in-law or... For the following teachers, please report to... All right, his adopted son or godson, uh, Mark Antony. Now, he's going to now step into place, all right, um, with a new triumvirate. All right, and who was in that? Well, you got Mark Anthony, you've got Octavian, and, and then some other guy some that other nobody guy. really yeah, cares yeah. about. I, I never can remember that third guy. All right. And enter sexy. Cleopatra. I'm the perfect example of all press is good press. I also like to share the bed with multiple companions, two of which we've already talked about, because I get stuff handled. And as a result, you guys will read about me until the end of time. Hmm. And Mark Antony just could not resist her sexy mm, mm, mm. So what happens? Anthony falls madly in love with for Cleopatra because who won't who wouldn't? And they plan they hatch this plan to rule the world. Hmm. How did that work out? Octavian emerged and um he became Rome's first emperor. But wait, he that's not Mark Anthony. No, it's not Mark Anthony. So it didn't work out. It did not work out between Cleopatra. She had her eyes on someone else. So what happened to old Cleopatra? Well, there's this funny story. So I was in bed, not wearing really much of anything. And I decided that things just could not go any further the way that they already were. And there's an asp and the rest of my body. And basically, they're dangerous and deadly. And I was buried in a rug. So she dies. Yeah. All right. So then Augustus takes over, and this really begins where Rome is going to really spread out and um, take over much of the known world at that time. But wait, what happened to Octavian? Did he change his name? Is that what I said? 
Octave? What no, he said Augustus. Oh. But isn't that, isn't that the same person? Really? It is. He what? just changed his name. What does Augustus mean, by the way? Exalted one. Yeah. The exalted one. All right. And this begins the Pax Romana. Bum, bum, bum. Dum, 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 dum. Star Wars theme. Dum, 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 dum. And then, shh. You know. That's Darth Vader. Yeah, Darth Vader. Of course. Of course. Yeah. All right. The so Empire. Now, the Empire, all right, as we know it today, all right. Now, Rome during this time is going to become the largest, most beautiful city in the world. And Augustus is its ruler. All right. What's some of the stuff that they accomplished, by the way? Well, didn't they build a whole bunch of stuff? Okay. Like what? Something about aqueducts, maybe? Okay. Maybe something like the Colosseum? Okay. I mean, a couple buildings we've heard of. I, I don't know. What, what do you think, Coach Brunel? Uh, those beautiful buildings were glorified within Rome. Ah, so we're talking about the buildings of Rome. And this is what the ruins look like now. But back then, it was beautiful. Here's some of their architecture. Um, now, key thing about their architecture is that stuff called concrete. We still use it today. All right. That road system. They freaking built roads all over the place. If you look here, they got roads all down in here, 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 here. And all roads lead back to... Mr. Mays, Mr. Mays, isn't it Rome? Hey, all right, man. All right. And there are some of those aqueducts you were talking about. What, uh, do you know what the aqueducts are for? They're actually to transport water from the north to the south so that everybody can have running water and clean water. Oh, good job. Pernell, you just got fired. <laughs> Man, they're all over the place. Hmm. All right, so this is really important. Miss Cooper, please. All righty, and then the arcs, all right. Um, it's like the McDonald's arc. All right. So oh, the arch. Yeah. Okay. So these are the different parts here that we've got on the screen of the arch, right? Yeah. Yeah. So these are some of the the little pieces of or however they made this thingy. Right. And they would, it would hold up lots of weight. That was the key thing about it. Is this like the McDonald's arch? Uh, not quite. Not like McDonald's. Do they have to go to McDonald's right now? That uh, sounds pretty good. Doesn't I, it sound good to you, Coach? I could, I could use a Big Mac now. Well, let's go get one. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid I'm a non meteor over here. Um, all right, then we got the old dome. Oh, that, that almost looks like an arch, except it's all the way around. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Ah. Now. And then we get the, see, so all of this is during what we call the Pax Romana, or what we call the Roman peace. All right, this is their golden age. And who does it start with again? Wait, it starts with Octavian, who was also known as? Augustus. That's right. All right. Now, the big problem that they had here is that 90% of the people were poor. All right, only the top 1% lived really well. Oh, so the plebeians were poor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like. No money poor, you know. I mean, like this is not like shop at Walmart. I mean, this is like, you know, you're, you're at the uh, family, you know. Um, I don't know. You can't even shop at Family Dollar. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're broke. All right, and so this high rate of unemployment, you got to keep people entertained. So how do you keep people entertained? Well, that's where they come up with the policy of bread and circuses, or you know, as we know it, um, the gladiator system. All right. Oh. All right. So you go to watch the gladiators and they give you free bread. Yeah, sort of like watching Monday Night Football. <laughs> All right. So next week, we'll be talking about who? Jesus Christ. Well, you know, unless you had Jupiter, you know, of course, or Zeus, you know. But then there's that other guy. All right. Yay. And I will see you. Oh, yeah, I got a couple of questions, so I need you to answer. All right, write down these questions for me. Write down all four of them and then answer them on a sheet of paper. Have a great day.